Right off the bat, I want to start by asking if there are any questions about anything they've heard so far, anything they want to hear me talk about. Anybody? Yeah. Can you talk about your tuning of your song? Sure. We came, we came in last night and tuned. And um, you tuned for the touch and you tune for the sound. Because if you don't tune for both, you may have the right sound, but it'll feel too hard, or it'll feel too mushy. That's completely subjective. It's all subjective. But it also varies from room to room. I have a pattern that I like. And uh, my pattern basically is that the floor tom is the five, the 14, the small one. Five, five, so five, one. And what happens when you put new heads on a drum set Even if you leave them overnight, as soon as you turn the lights on, even the fabulous Evans 360, level 360 drum heads, are subject to the laws of physics and heat. <laughs> but that's the octave below. Right? Now, it's not locked in perfect 440. And then from here, the floor, the 16 is usually a whole step or more down. That's going to bug me into my face. Thank you. <laughs> dry I am <laughs> or yeah. and that's just what's available in the open pitches you know because then you can move stuff around with your elbow and, and sticks and manipulate the pitch um, one of my one of my longtime students that I'm most proud of took this idea, studied with me for about three years, took this idea and ran with it. Some of them, some of you may have heard of Ari Honig. Yeah. yeah. And so, okay, so this kind of lead me into another subject because as much as I love Ari, when you go for direct pitch, something gets sacrificed. And to me, that's phrasing. And for me, phrasing is more important than pitch. Because if I'm playing the proper phrasing, I can make you hear the pitches I want. Like this. I don't have to play none of the notes. 
<laughs> for you to know what it is I'm trying to say. <coughs> If you're a jazz, if you're a drummer, it doesn't matter what music you play. Learn all of the melody. Learn all of the music, right? Because if you ask a drummer, a jazz drummer, you ask nine out of 10 jazz drummers to play confirmation, they're gonna do this. the first eight, but that's not confirmation. That's the hits from confirmation, <laughs> right? And so when I got to Berkeley 11 years ago, um, I realized that even the best drummers at the school didn't know tunes. And they could play, but their playing was couldn't hold your interest for very long. Once you figured out what they were doing drum-wise, drumistically speaking, there wasn't enough music there to hold your attention, right? And so I created this class called Jazz Drum Set Repertoire Development and Applications. <laughs> you know, the academics like lots of words, right? Academics use 50 words where five will do. Here's the four words that matter. 15 weeks, 50 tunes. Right, you gotta know the melody, you gotta know the form, you gotta know the structure. And yeah, I might even ask you what quality of the chord is in the bridge on the A, on the B section of Whisper Not for extra credit. Why? Because I'm tired of the joke about 17 musicians and a drummer. And the days of the tenure drummer is gone. So confirmation should be this. <laughs> 